being that this is about the two-week anniversary when things really changed for us, I wanted to just do a quick video and kind of document our day-by-day -day evolution to, to what has become uh, our, our new norm. We've changed a lot in the last two weeks. I know that society has changed a lot, and you know this is just kind of a, a way to document all the unique, crazy, weird things that have happened to us in the last two weeks that I never thought would have would have <laughs> really uh, really would have ever happened to us. So take it back to March 11th. Uh, March 11th was really the first day that clients came and said, hey, do you guys have a plan for at home? I didn't really think about it other than to say, yeah, we have this disaster recovery plan. Our goal or our, our plan is then to, to move to at home agents. To be honest, didn't really take it seriously other than to say, hey, you know, later this week, I'm gonna, I'll take a peek at that. Well, that night is when the NBA shut down. I think it was Rudy Gobert, one of their players got, got ill with coronavirus. And for me, in my mind, everything changed. So I came in the next morning, had an all department meeting, it's 9.30 and said, hey guys, what do we need to do if we need to transition to totally at home? And I had like jaws drop, right? Because we're, we're anti at home, we're brick and mortar, we're security, we're you know, that kind of uh, a contact center. Well, we, we discussed it and hey, and by the way, I have videos of this on YouTube and I have videos of this on LinkedIn. The actual meetings that I'm talking about here, we documented, and kind of talked about the, the process of what we went through. but. You know, we talked about we needed to look at our IT and our data structure, right? Being a BPO, it's not just like we have Salesforce. Every client's different, different CRMs, different data structures, proprietary systems, different connectivity. We needed to check our telephony within contact and how do we kind of merge those things, HR and payroll, making sure that we can operate in, in that environment. How do we manage reps? Everybody talks about, oh, it's not too bad to manage at-home employees. Well, at-home employees aren't call center associates. You're not gonna go and and monitor your finance person or your marketing person and listen to their calls. Well, we need to operate in that type of environment where it's a little bit more strict and we need to hear what's going on at all times. How do we do that and how do we do that properly? And then we need to you know, really talk with our clients and make sure that we're walking you know, kind of lockstep with those guys as we walk down the road. So we had this meeting, kind of broke up into some, some groups and said, hey guys, you take this piece, you take this piece and you know, let's talk tomorrow. So March 13th was a Friday. Um, and I got a phone call from, well, actually it was a, a couple emails that I found from a, from a group at a 211 LA needed some help. We have a relationship with kind of their management team through in contact. So had a discussion with them and, and said, Hey Tom, you know, we need 10 agents, right? Started with 10 agents. I said, not a problem. You know, we'll work on that. We'll source these agents this week and, you know, we'll do a training class next week. Perfect. Well, I get a phone call at five o'clock. Remembers at Red Lobster, uh, <laughs> and uh, everybody was kind of it was kind of weird, right? Like things were starting to kind of shut down a little bit. I was picking up a to-go order, and I get a phone call and says, "Hey, actually, it was a text that hey, forget that ten. Let's go to twenty agents." I said okay. So you know we, we made some some moves there on that Friday. Changed our Facebook ads a little bit, and you know started sourcing agents. That the fourteenth and fifteenth that weekend. We bunkered down with uh, our IT staff. We said, guys, we're not leaving here on Sunday until we know exactly every single client and the connectivity that we need from a data side, and we need to be able to work, operate off of our network. So we did that, and we tested every single client, every single piece of connectivity, all the telephony aspect. We got the integrated soft phone working within contact. So felt pretty good that for the first time, it took me about a week, I had a plan in my mind that we could do this. We had a meeting on Monday then when everybody came in, 9.30 again. That one's on, uh, is recorded as well. And we finalized kind of all the plans. The, the groups did a good job of coming up with some initial policies, procedures for taking equipment home, policies, procedures for how we're gonna operate, how we're gonna do video chat, how we're gonna talk to reps, how we were gonna manage. Payroll and finance felt pretty good because everything we had there was in the cloud. So I wasn't sure if we're gonna pull the trigger yet, Right, but if we needed to, we were in a much better place than we were that even that Wednesday before. So in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and really five days, we you know we, we did a lot of a lot of groundwork in, in the behind the scenes. Tuesday's the first day that we sent agents home to test. So I just sent three agents, um, three random agents that have been here for a while. Said, hey guys, take your stuff home. You know, let's test everything out. Make sure that we're going to be okay. That all worked really well. Thursday. I'm um, sorry, Wednesday then, we said, let's do a stress test. And we took three 
we picked three agents from every single client, every single program, sent them home, make sure we had connectivity everywhere. That worked pretty well. We operated with Slack. We did video chats. We were working that process, testing those policies, testing those procedures out. Seems like we made a lot, we made a lot of tweaks, especially to the how we were operating and how many times we were talking to a rep a day and those kind of things. But the process was there. We are now at a tweaking standpoint. And I'm glad we did this because on Thursday, Governor Wolf here in Pennsylvania ordered that all non-life-sustaining businesses be closed, which opens up a whole other can of worms. Like, what's a life-sustaining business? Are we a life-sustaining sustaining business? We're doing 211 emergency work. Um, we, we have clients that we're doing customer service work. But we said, you know what, let's not mess around with this at all, even though we're going to apply for a waiver, which we did that day. We applied for a waiver. Um, we sent this Thursday and Friday, sent every single support staff member home. We sent every single client that is non 211 related home. So you can imagine, you know, in a, in a four or 500 seat call center, the, the logistics of that and really doing it in a 48 hour period, you know, it was pretty proud of, uh, pretty proud of my team. That Friday as well, we got a call from 211 that says, hey, listen, we're getting absolutely bombarded here. We need 30 more agents. Right, so we took the weekend, worked the weekend through uh, sourcing agents, doing interviews on Sunday, doing interviews on Monday, um, and you know, trying to, to get that class. There's logistics to training 30 people in this environment as well. You can't have 30 people in a room. So the good thing is we've, you know, we decided that we we're going to use the entire call center, one of the entire call center floors, so you know, a 200 seat call center floor for one of our rooms, and space. You know these 30 people out in that room we have a nurse that we hired that's on staff that took uh, everybody's temperatures when they came in made sure that they didn't have any symptoms we actually did you know thought about you know we, we really didn't have any temperatures that were that were crazy but you know we actually called the the hospitals and said you know what is the temperature that to send somebody home and, and we actually we got a number nobody was even close to that so we felt pretty good so Working that Saturday, working that Sunday, we, we you know, started our class on Monday, or, or I'm sorry, we sourced agents on Monday. We had the other class, that first initial class of 211 guys that have been working here at Expedia. We sent all of them home on Monday. Um, and then, you know, really just have that one class that's kind of going on here now that, that started, uh, started on Wednesday. They're going to work until tomorrow. It's Thursday as I'm recording this. They're going to work until Friday. And then we're going to send them totally home, and we should be really should be totally virtual from that standpoint. The one thing that I did leave out and kind of saved to the end, we did have a visit from the health department with two uniformed officers. That happened on Tuesday. They came in um, and asked, you know, what kind of operation we were. I showed them, you know, I did apply for that waiver that we t we discussed. I did get a first on that that weekend. Probably should have said that earlier, but um, I did get an email from the state that says we don't even need a waiver. But then two days ago, or the day after we got that visit from the health department that I showed them this email from the state that said, hey, we're fine. They took a look. We're social distancing. We're, we had hand sanitizer. We had a nurse on staff. They were pretty happy with everything, let everything go. Um, I actually did get an extra waiver, right, the actual waiver on kind of the state's letterhead that says, you know, we are a life-sustaining business. We can be open. So that's posted on all of our windows. Kind of feel like... You know, I don't know, even though we're not doing anything wrong, you almost feel like you're doing something wrong when people maybe give you dirty looks when they see that you have people coming into your place. It's unique. It's weird. Um, it's hopefully short-lived. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I really hope that it is. I want to bring everybody back. I think that there's a place for the virtual, you know, agent. That's a discussion for another uh, video. Uh, for what we are doing right now, I'm, I'm just proud of the team, proud of what we've been able to accomplish. We went from, I don't really have a plan other than it's kind of written. Um, we've never had to execute it to full execution and no one working here in, a, in really in a two week window. So interesting, crazy, uh, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a unique environment that we're, we're learning to, to operate in this new norm. So again, I just wanted to, to kind of document that. I hope that gives you a, a little bit of interest and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.